In this video, we're going to learn why we should declare multiple variables, one per line, when using C. So in C, we can declare multiple variables on the same line like this, int x, comma, y. This will declare variables of type int called x and y. We could also have int x and int y on separate lines. And this here will also declare variables x and y of type int. So in programming languages, there are sometimes different styles or approaches for doing what is effectively the same thing. Programmers sometimes have fun debating about the advantages or disadvantages of different styles. If you're working on a professional project, there might be a coding style guide which outlines what style to use in situations like this where we could technically use one approach or the other. A big reason why these style guides exist is so that the code in a project remains consistent even if multiple developers are writing code, which makes the code overall more readable for everyone, instead of code that switches styles from one file or function to the next. Now, in the case of declaring multiple variables, most developers will tell you that we should declare one variable per line. Let's go over some of the advantages of this approach. So one issue with declaring multiple variables on the same line is that it can lead to confusion as to the types of those variables, so for example, if we have int star x and then y, we might think that both x and y are going to be pointers to and int, but really only x is a pointer to and int. y is actually going to be a regular int variable. So in C, whatever variable is to the right of a star like this is going to become a pointer variable. And even though it may help to think of this variable as a pointer to an int, if the star is next to the type, the star could be next to the variable like this, or we could have space star space the variable, or more spaces, the spaces will be ignored. So if we also want to make y a pointer variable, we'll have to have a star to the left of y, maybe like this. Again, the spaces don't really matter, we could have this too. So one thing we could do is as a style, put the star next to the variable name like this. And this habit would ensure that both variables are pointers, or what we could do is just declare one variable per line. We could have int star x and then int star y. And it's clear that both variables are pointers. We could also put the star next to the type. We could have int star space y and int star space x instead. And maybe we prefer it this way because now all the information for the type of this variable is together. We have pointer to and int. Another reason to declare one variable per line is that it's also a good practice to initialize variables when we declare them. If we declare multiple variables on the same line, it's easier to miss a variable initialization. So for example, if we have here int x and then y is equal to one, if we look at this quickly at a glance, we might think that both x and y are being initialized to one. If we have even more variables being declared and initialized on the same line, again, if we just glance at the statement, it's easy to miss that X is not being initialized. Whereas if we have variables declared one per line, it's going to be easy to spot if the variable is not being initialized. Another reason to declare one variable per line is that it's going to be easier to document the purpose of each variable with a comment above each declaration. If we declare many variables on one line, the comment to document all these variables is likely going to have to be pretty long, which might be awkward in terms of the actual placement of the text relative to the code that's being documented. Whereas if we have one variable declaration per line, we can neatly document each variable's purpose above the declaration. So here we could have the amount of this, and maybe total of, and then a declaration for total, and so on. Now, of course, we want our variable names to be self-documenting, but comments can still help. Now, diff is a tool used to find the differences between the contents of files. We might use diff or a tool that works like diff to find the differences between the previous and updated versions of a source code file so that we can see what changes were made when the code was updated, maybe as part of a code review. If we declare one variable per line, diff will more clearly identify what changes were made. Let me show you an example. Let's say that we have a source code file with many variable declarations on the same line. Then in an updated version of that source code file, we'll add one more variable declaration for VX here. 
We'll save this, then we'll use diff. We'll have diff same line 1.c and same line 2.c. Then we'll get here this comparison of the two files where it's kind of hard to see the difference that this variable here is what's different. But instead, if we have a source code file like this with one variable declaration per line, and then we add a new variable declaration like this one here, int vx, then if we use diff to compare these files, we'll find the difference is more obvious. So we'll have diff with diff lines 1.c and diff lines 2.c. And now the output of diff makes it very obvious that the difference between the versions of this file is this variable declaration here. Declaring one variable per line can also sometimes work out better when using a version control system like Git. I'm not going to assume the viewers of this video know about version control, so I'm going to oversimplify this. A version control system like Git can allow multiple developers to make changes to a source code file. Each developer essentially starts off with a common version of the file, and each can then make changes to the file. And the changes can eventually be merged together in a new version of the file. If developers make changes to different lines of the file, the merging is likely to be done automatically by Git. But sometimes merging can't be done automatically. We get what's called a conflict and a developer will have to spend extra time figuring out how to resolve this conflict. Generally, conflicts happen when developers change the same line in a source code file, as they might need to if multiple variable declarations are on the same line. Let's go over an example. Let's say that two developers start off with a source code file that looks like this, with all the variable declarations on one line. Then one developer adds this variable declaration here, and the other developer adds this variable declaration here. Then we'll try to merge these changes. So we'll go to the repository directory. Then we'll have git merge feature to merge the changes and we get a conflict which will take extra work to resolve. Let's check out the file. So here we can see the file has a conflict because changes were made to the same line. Let's go over a different example. So here we have all the variable declarations on different lines. Then let's say that one developer adds a new variable declaration up here and the other developer adds a new variable declaration down here. Now let's try to merge these changes. So we'll go to the repository directory then we'll do the merge with git merge feature and we'll have the message merge here. And now we can see there's no conflict and the merge was done automatically. If we check out the file, we'll see the changes have been merged successfully. Now it's not always guaranteed to work out nicely like this just because we follow the general rule of declaring one variable per line. It worked out nicely like this in this case because in each version of the source code file, we declared the new variables on different lines. If in each version of the source code file, we declared the new variable on the same line, we would have a conflict again. But I did want to go over this example because reducing merge conflicts is cited as an advantage of declaring one variable per line. Now, of course, when comparing different styles, there can be advantages and disadvantages of different styles. So here, where we're declaring one variable per line, we could say it's a disadvantage that it takes up more vertical space. And in some sense, that creates its own readability issue. We could also say it's a disadvantage that we're repeating the type int again and again here. Also, even if we use the style of declaring one variable per line, we might still have multiple variable declarations on the same line when using a for loop. So for example, for int i is equal to zero and j is equal to one, and then the rest of the for loop. So in this video, we've covered some advantages of declaring one variable per line when using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.